Fellow students, researchers, welcome back to video number 12 in our Smart PLS video series. This video focuses on collinearity issues. This is step one in the structural model assessment. If you haven't watched video number 11, please check the link above and go back and watch video number 11. I have provided the link down below as well. It is important to check for collinearity issues before progressing with our structural model assessment. Collinearity issues are present when two variables, exogenous variables, are measuring the same attribute of, a, of an abstract object or of an endogenous variable. In case we have two variables or three variables measuring the same attribute, then we got a collinearity problem. And we have to deal with that before progressing with further structural model assessments and data reporting or analytical reporting. In video number 11, we mentioned five steps or five phases that we go through when we assess our structural models. In the first step, we check for collinearity. In the second step, we study the relationships. In the third step, we check for R-square, the coefficient determination. Fourth, we check for F-squared, which is the effect size and finally, in step number five, we check for Q squared, that predictive relevance. In this specific video number 12, we address only step number one, collinearity issues. We check for lateral collinearity mainly, but we look as well at vertical collinearity that is specific to the measurement model. And lateral collinearity is specific to the structural model. In this video, I'm going to present some further details on collinearity issues, vertical and lateral before moving to smart PLS and demonstrate how we can check for lateral collinearity, mainly checking for VIF, the variance inflation factor. And we got to have a threshold below five. Please stay tuned. Continuing my fellow students, my fellow researchers with collinearity issues as phase number one in the structural equation modeling or structural model assessment process. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, in the structural or same assessment, structural model assessment, we go into five phases. The first phase is, is collinearity issues. 
In the second phase, we check for the significance and relevance of uh, structural model relationships. Then in step number three, as you notice, we look at the R squared, then X squared in step number four. And in step number five, we look for the predictive relevance of Q squared. Here, we check for collinearity issues. As you notice in this figure, collinearity issues, we have to, for instance, if we have this structural model in front of us, as you notice, once we check for collinearity in the structural model, we disregard our indicators in the model. We only focus on our exogenous here, the, the, the main or the, the higher level, the higher level variables or factors. So we have here three relationships, as you notice know, in the three figures there. Okay, three relationships. Regression one, regression two, and regression three, okay? So this is a structural model. And for collinearity issues, we check the relationship, the lateral relationship between, for instance, Y6 and Y1 and two, Y7 and then Y3, four and five. And we see if for instance, Y1 and Y2 measure the same attribute of Y6. If they do so, then we have a collinearity problem. Okay? And as you notice in the structural model that we have here, structural model is a multi-regression model. Okay? It measures the relationships or it describes relationships among many complex variables or abstract uh, concepts. Okay, so if we have two or more variables measuring the same underlying attribute of an intangible or intangible object, then we end up with a collinearity problem. And we have to differentiate between correlation and collinearity. We may have two variables that are highly correlated, but at a very low level of collinearity. We check for the VIF factors, okay? And we have to assess each set or each set of the predictor constructs needs to be assessed. Here, if we go back, if we go back to, to, to the prior slide here, we have to check the relationship between Y1 and Y6 and also y2 and y6, okay? We take each variable separately, each predictor separately. Okay. Okay then. And this is, multicollinearity may come into vertical collinearity and this is what we face in the measurement model you can go back to our prior videos and check our measurement models. Measurement models are a part that shows the indicators, the questionnaire items reflecting on their main constructs or main variables. For instance, we had a trust as one variable or one construct in our model, the main model, studying the factors behind online banking use or success of online banking use. Trust is the main construct 
and the questionnaire items, those indicators, like five indicators that we had in the model, are the questionnaire items. So trust along with its questionnaire items make the measurement model. And here in this specific measurement model, we look for vertical collinearity, okay? And once we look for vertical collinearity, here we check, for instance, the relationship here between LVP1, P2, P3, and PA, etc. as you notice in this circle in front of you. Okay, so we go vertically. We check between those indicators or those constructs vertically and see how each of those may be measuring, for instance, the same attribute or not. So vertical collinearity, it's collinearity among the LV here predictors. As an example here, if we are studying, if we are studying, for instance, satisfaction, mainly here we have a formative uh, factors or a model. We have hotel food quality, hotel employee services, and hotel room quality. Once we check for vertical collinearity, we take those three predictors vertically and check the relationships or how their indicators correlate or are collinear or not with each other. As for lateral collinearity for the structural model, we check, as I showed you in earlier slides, between the predictor and the main variable. Okay, as you notice here, and I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example here. So if we take, for instance, the hotel food quality and hotel food employee services and the hotel room quality here, once we take lateral collinearity, we'll be addressing the relationship between hotel food quality and satisfaction, not hotel food quality and hotel uh, employee services. We go laterally, we go horizontally once we check for uh, lateral collinearity. So for lateral collinearity tests, the analyst's view may be supported by reliability, validity, and vertical collinearity. However, it may fail the test for full, or it may fail the test for lateral collinearity, and as a result, then we may end up by a model or a structural model that's not valid, that's not reliable. So collinearity issues may be a problem, and a step, the first step in the structural model assessment will address collinearity issues. This is an example of uh, lateral collinearity, as you notice here, as I explained for you, we go laterally, we go horizontal. The threshold, the minimum threshold accepted, once we check for collinearity in the structural model is, must be below five. And mainly we are concerned with the inner VII. Okay, what are the possible solutions here? If we have, if we face collinearity issues, combine variables, combine constructs, because they are measuring the same attribute, then we end up combining two together or eliminating one of them. So we don't have a collinearity issue. Okay, as I mentioned, we have to have a VIF factor below five. Let's now move to Smart PLS and demonstrate and provide a real example on our general model that we are using for this video series. Please stay tuned.
right, my fellow students, researchers, let's now demonstrate in Smart PLS how we check for collinearity issues. It's a very simple process, okay? We go to our model that we have, okay? This is our model here, okay? We got our model right here. What we do is simply we go into calculate, all right? We have already uh, drawn our model and we have already uh, input our questionnaire items or indicators for each specific construct as you notice right here, okay? So simply here, what we do is we go into uh, calculate and a PLS algorithm and then simply start calculation, okay? And that's what we get. If you notice here, let me just choose the annotation here and just to show you, okay, a spotlight, spotlight. Okay, if you notice here, we have a collinearity issues tab, okay? Right in here, okay? We click on the collinearity issues tab and what we look for, we don't, we're not much concerned with the outer VIF values actually. We go into the inner VIF values, we click it. And as long as we have VIF values that are lower, as I mentioned, uh, than five, then we are okay. We have no collinearity problems right here. Okay, here in this model, we have no collinearity problems. Even for the outer VIF, nothing chosen in red. And then we have also a good indication that there are no collinearity issues. So simply, this is the process on how to check for collinearity issues. And in this way, or by now, we have completed phase number one out of the five, five phases required for a structural model assessment in Smart PLS. Please stay tuned for the coming video in which we're going to address step number two. Bye-bye for now.